This is Cheap Bike into Super Light Bike Build for under £1,000, Episode 3. Yep, I'm sticking with that catchy name for the third week in a row. This week, I'm going to get the bike built up, go for the all-important weigh-in, estimate just how much time I've saved by reducing the weight, take it for a spin up a local climb, and pick out the people in the comments who guessed the weight saving of the frame correctly. Oh, this is going to be fun. Let's get cracking. For those of you that have missed episode one and episode two, don't worry, I won't hold it against you. But since Ollie and I said this, you up friends in a hill climb race. Yes, I have got the perfect bike. Turns out I didn't have just the perfect bike, but I've been really busy doing loads of real mechanic stuff. Real mechanic stuff. <laughs> I've drilled, I've cut, I've sanded, I've done loads of online shopping, and even some really bad acting. <laughs> but now it's crunch time. I need to turn this pile of parts into a bike, and I'm gonna start by gluing the tires on. So having wrestled the tubular tire on, I can inflate it, look to centralize it, and then with these little tabs, which we've got left out of the side, we simply lift the tire ever so slightly off and peel the top protective cover on so we're left with a sticky surface on um, both the side of the rim and on the side of the tape on the tubular tire. Inflate it to the proper pressure, leave it be. Tub glue, just gotta do it for another one now. Oh, I'm not sure I've got the strength in my arms. First error of the build. So from the top, this is a spoke hole, which I thought was the valve hole. However, the valve hole is under there. We're my only human, aren't I? Right, let's fix my mistake then. God, it's not an easy job, this. It's not like fitting an inner tube, is it? Right, wheel's done. This is a blue and impressive tool. I never get to use this thing anymore because no bikes have like press fit headsets. Buzzing to use it, one hell of a bit of kit. Let's get the forks and the headset in the bike. Right, it's that tool not getting used for another 10 years. There we go. Yeah. Quick little update, headset, done, forks, done, handlebars, done, stem, done, crank, done. And that doesn't mean the bike's kind of starting to take shape. When you're trying to reduce the weight of your bike, every gram counts. And you're gonna be pleased to know that these red chainring bolts save a whopping two grams per bolt. I mean, that's 10 grams saved in total. That is well worth it. Right, next thing I'm gonna do is get the shifters onto the handlebars 
and that means I can then attach and route the cabling for the derailleur and the front and rear brakes. Now, some people in the episode two commented, oh, why are you having both brakes on your bike if you're just cycling up here? You don't need those. Well, it turns out you do need both brakes as per the hill climb regulations. We don't want to be breaking any rules. Oh, a couple of bits done. Right, chain on. I've been able to make it ever so slightly shorter because I haven't got to account for the large chain ring. We simply haven't got one. Now, in a previous episode, I did say I was contemplating removing some of the lower sprockets because I'm simply not going to need them when I'm cycling uphill. I've decided not to do that. I don't want to remove any of those. I'm just going to leave the cassette how it is. However, I do need to just double check the limit screws on the mech because it's not quite shifting all the way across. So, Going my screwdriver. The best thing about being in the maintenance set like we are now means I'm on a wheelie chair. I can do this. I'm back. Oh, life is good. I'm armed with screwdrivers. I'm going to tape the cables up to the handlebars next, start to make this neat and tidy on the front end. Naturally, I'm not going to use any bar tape, unnecessary way. So, normally, I would use some nice, smart black electrical tape. Smooth finish, sleek, does the job perfectly. Turns out, some pesky little person has been in here, stolen my electrical tape. Tape is super useful and it's an essential item in every cyclist's toolbox. I'm not very happy about it. What I'm going to have to you is, um, I'm going to use this not subtle tubeless tape as a little temporary fix. By the time we get to the hill climb, hopefully I'll fix this temporary issue. But for now, this is what it is. So we've made good progress on the build so far, and I've actually just run into my first issue. So my bargain bucket quick release levers which are super light the end cap for the front one has got this little raised edge on it but what that means is is as i'm trying to do the quick release lever up this little edge is biting onto the edge on the edge of the hub and as such the quick release lever is just going tight onto the hub rather than clamping onto the lower section of the forks which means it's not holding it securely so that is not going to work. So what I've had to do is use the end cap off of the original quick release levers and now we're um, back in the game and the front wheel's held in securely. Good job I noticed that otherwise my front wheel wasn't actually going to be held in place properly. Right, let's crack on, carry on building. Right, that is looking like a hill climb bike to me. I haven't got any more parts left that I need to put back on the bike. It's got brakes, it's got gears, it's got handlebars, it's got steering, it's got everything you need apart from a set of pedals. Although when I weighed the bike first time around, it didn't have pedals, so I can't add those on yet. All that remains is get a thing on the scales. Scales are ready to go. Zero those. Put that out of the way. Oh, this is the moment of truth. It's what it's all been for over the last three weeks. Imagine if it's actually not any lighter. Let's do it. Oh. Point two two kilos. That's actually outrageous. I cannot believe how light that is. I'm like, I feel I'm just a bit lost for words. 
sold the fruits of my labour. Oh, fantastic. Um, all that's left, go ride this thing. Let's get kitted up, see you on the road. Right then, before we get far and go ride this bike, a few things I want to cover off. Firstly, I think it looks absolutely incredible. I'm super chuffed with how this thing comes out. I hope everybody agrees at home. But if you don't and you're already poised, ready to type into the comments, oh yeah, of course it's a super light bike. You've just removed half of the useful stuff, chopped off the handlebars. Well, yes, I've already taken that into account, you see, and I've planned ahead. So by adding back on the parts, which I think makes it back into what I'd count as a traditional road bike. So the large chainring, the front derailleur, the bottle cages, some normal handlebars. I've added up the weight of those components. It comes to 500 grams, just a tiny bit over to be honest, which means if I add 500 grams onto the bike weight of 6.22 kilograms, we've got five, six, we've got 6.72 kilograms, which is still under the UCI's weight limit and it's still an incredibly light bike. Now, other thing I also want to cover off, um, which I'm ever so slightly concerned about, I've got to be honest with you. First bit, I hope that my repaired saddle holds up and as soon as I don't put all of my weight on that or go over a bump, it doesn't break straight away. And I'm also concerned that I'm going to forget I haven't got the drop part of my handlebars and I'm just going to sort of go to put my hands on them and just immediately crash. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed I remember that. Anyway, I'm gonna go find a local climb to GCM Mega Base. I'm gonna try ride it up at full gas, turn the pedals in anger, and I'm gonna see how close I can get to Ollie's time and um, see how much work I've got cut out for the weekend when we actually go head to head in a real life hill climb race. Right, let's do it. Ah, right, so I've made it to Cavendish Road. It's a famous climb not far from GCM Mega Base. Now, the fastest time up here, would you believe it, is actually not Andrew Feather. Apparently, someone called Lee Mears, but I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the time that Ollie has gone from the bottom to the top, and it's 1 minute 17 seconds. So I'm going to ride this as fast as I can, see how close I am to Ollie's time. But before I do that, what I do want to discuss is how the weight saving that I've made on this bike is going to translate into the hill climb that Ollie and I are doing, which is the struggle. The example we often give here on GCN Tech is that if you cycled up Alpe d'Huez, one kilogram of weight saved would save you approximately 40 seconds. Ollie and I will be racing up the struggle. It's about one third shorter than Alpe d'Huez. So scaling back our example, the weight saving on the bike means I can estimate I'll be 23 seconds faster than when the bike was in its original condition. And I can also estimate that by sanding the paint of the bike, that only accounts for about a two second time saving. Yeah, not really sure it was worth all that effort. And especially I've just basically ruined quite an iconic looking bike, which I actually really liked. Never mind, in true style, I'm gonna just ignore that fact. Get on with the climb. Right. I'm gonna count myself in. Three, two, one. Stay. Okay. So uh, it turns out, even after riding full gas to the top, I'm not as quick as Ollie. I'm gonna leave it there on the times, but it's not exactly looking promising for the weekend when I've got to race him over a climb, which is like 10 times longer. Yeah. Goodness me. I'm gonna go sulk over by the park. Right there. So there you have it, that draws this three-part bike build series to a close. But i tell you, one thing we haven't done before I forget is I haven't announced the winners for the people that correctly guessed the weight saving by sanding the paint off the frame. So what we'll do, I'll put up a little list on screen of the people that correctly guessed it, because would you believe it, it was actually more than one person. So get in contact with us over on social media, email, whatever method you prefer, and we'll get a water bottle sent out to you for your fantastic guests. Now, as I said, it draws this series to a close, but fear not, all of the action isn't over yet, because if you want to see me racing Ollie when I'm riding this bike up the struggle, head over to GCN, we'll have a video showcasing all of our efforts. Next Friday, I think that's out. 
But I do hope this build series has inspired you to take on a project like this of your own. And I wanna hear your sort of experiences of lightweight bike builds. So let us know in the comments section down below. And as always, to see more cool bike tech videos like this, you know what to do. Subscribe to GCN Tech, turn on your notifications. Right, I'm out of here. See ya.